Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. This is episode number 279. I'm your host, Eric Worrell, and today we're going to be talking about real estate scams that are affecting people buying either their first home or maybe it's a rental property, uh, something that you should definitely be aware of uh, if you are planning on buying more property because it has affected more than $1 billion in lost income just in the last year. So we're going to talk about that right after this. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your hosts, Stephen White and Eric Worrell. So before we get to our featured story from CBS News, uh, we are going to be talking about a few other in the news stories that you may find interesting as a landlord or real estate investor. Uh, So the first one, uh, maybe you've heard of this company, maybe you haven't. Uh, The name of the company is called WeWork. And uh, what WeWork is, according to Wikipedia, is an American company that provides shared workspaces for technology startup subculture communities and services for entrepreneurs, freelancers, startups, small businesses, and large enterprises. So WeWork designs and builds physical and virtual shared spaces and office services uh, for entrepreneurs and companies. So kind of like these shared uh, uh, office spaces, and they kind of uh, have branded it pretty well and grown really fast. And you may have heard that they just had an IPO that did really poorly. Uh, but uh, you may find this interesting because uh, after the IPO did really poor, they've had quite the exodus. So uh, their chief real estate development officer resigned earlier this week, and their CEO was demoted, and they've got a lot going on. The chief uh, development officer, uh, Granite is his first name, uh, he said that when he joined the company, he had approximately 2 million square feet of space and a number that is now over 50 million square feet in almost every corner of the world. Uh, his departure follows that of Vice Chairman Michael Gross, VP of Operations and Special Projects uh, and Director of Development Ronnie Bahar. Uh, in reports Thursday, stated that 20 people aligned with former CEO Adam Newman uh, would be leaving the company. However, two people disputed that this was uh, yet to be seen and associated with Newman, who's leaving the company on his own terms. If you're curious about the IPO, uh, basically what happened is they uh, filed the prospectus uh, earlier in September, and it said that we company company had cash and cash equivalents of roughly 2.5 billion as of June 30th. However, while revenue nearly doubled to 1.8 billion in 2018, its losses also more than doubled to 1.9 billion. I don't claim to be any kind of uh, investor in the markets or expert or anything of that nature, but you do see more and more IPOs either not happening or having really poor debuts. Uh, it seems like these uh, companies that are kind of working in the tech spaces are coming back uh, down to earth. Uh, we covered that on a previous co- podcast as well, how the markets have cooled in San Francisco and I've actually not uh, had seen any appreciation in the last year or any growth at all, um, where that's kind of indicative of the fact that the uh, tech space is cooling a little bit. Uh, so WeWork, if you're interested, I'll uh, link to this article from Reuters.com along with the original article I was uh, speaking about earlier from the real deal, uh, dot com. So uh, another quick story that you may find really interesting. This is from keepingcurrentmatters.com. And the author's name is, oh, doesn't have one. I don't know why they do that sometimes. Well, maybe it's at the bottom. Let's check it out. Nope, just says KCM crew. Uh, the title of this article, though, says, Are you ready for the Black Friday of real estate? So I saw the title, you know, it kind of seemed clickbaity, and I was like, all right, what's it about? Well, it says, according to a new study from Realtor.com, the week of September 22nd is the best time of year to buy a home, making it Black Friday for home buyers. So they evaluated housing data in 53 metros from 2016 to 2018, and Realtor.com determined that the first week of fall is when buyers tend to find less competition, more inventory, and biggest reductions on list price. The report explains that during the first week of fall, buyers tend to face 26% less competition from other buyers, and they are likely to see 6.1% more homes available on the market compared to other weeks of the year. Nearly 6% of homes in the market will also see price reductions averaging 2.4% less than their peak. So it's uh, the article goes on and asks about like what's the difference in the first week of fall. So it says that basically the summer winds down and kids return to school and many families hit pause in their home search and wait until the next season to start again as seasonal inventory builds up and restores itself to more buyer friendly levels. Fall buyers will be in a better position to take advantage of today's low mortgage rates and increased purchasing power. 
So it's an interesting uh, story from keepingcurrentmatters.com. And uh, it's uh, also interesting as I was just recently reading up on best time to buy a vehicle because my uh, wife and I are going to be in the market for a vehicle as our family grows. And uh, that was kind of similar in some ways, you know, of course, supply and demand. But if you're interested in that, uh, what it said was typically after holidays, uh, while I was looking for a used vehicle, um, when a lot of people buy new vehicles, um, when you see those sales for new vehicles, well, a lot of those people are going to be trading their vehicles in. And those uh, dealerships that are getting those vehicles in, uh, if they can't sell them, they have to kind of uh, sell them to auction. And they don't want to do that because they take a bath on those. So uh, it said like, uh, ironically enough, because you're talking about Black Friday, but um, after Black Friday in that area, uh, after Christmas, um, Veterans Day, anytime you see any of those big sales that you see advertised quite a bit for new cars, that's a great time to actually buy a used car as well uh, that week following it as uh, supply of used vehicles will be very high and uh, you may be able to score a good deal if you're in the market for a used car. So just a little tidbit for you right there. And now this last section here, uh, this is a news article, a video from cbsnews.com. I will link to it in the show notes. And it's saying that the uh, Better Business Bureau warns of a rise in real estate email scams. I'll uh, I'll play a clip of it here and we'll link to it again if you want to check out the original content here. And then we'll discuss. We have a warning for you tonight about an email scam that has hit home buyers hard. Losses have soared from $360 million in 2016 to $1.3 billion last year. Meg Oliver spoke to a victim who lost her money and her part of the American dream. So what's it been like here? It's rough. Dina Palmieri has lived in her parents' basement, saving money for eight years. The preschool teacher was about to close on her first condominium last spring. So excited. It was, you know, everything was happening so fast. Two weeks before the move, she received an email she thought was her attorney asking her to wire almost $11,000 for closing costs. It just popped up with your lawyer's name, not the email. Correct. And when I double clicked, that's when I was able to see the difference after I found out that these were fraudulent. She lost her money and the condo. Better Business Bureau investigator Steve Baker authored a new report highlighting the exploding number of similar real estate email scams. Reports of real estate fraud attempts rose 1,100 percent between 2015 and 2017. Eighty percent of businesses and other organizations have gotten one of these sorts of emails in the last year. Palmieri now has to start all over. It's evil, and I, I don't like to think that there's evil in this world because I naturally see the good in people. Well, I would definitely agree with her that that is pure evil. Uh, It's sad that these things happen, but I wanted to make you guys aware just in case you happen to be in the market for uh, a new home or you know somebody who is. I mean, that's uh, no small number to sneeze at when you're talking about a billion dollars in uh, fraudulent uh, activity. Uh, So basically, if you're uh, right before closing, uh, what you do is you uh, you get an email that has your attorney's name in the email itself saying that you got to, you know, wire the money across to this link. And uh if you get that email, who knows how they're getting it? Uh, that's pretty interesting to, to know how they would know that. Uh, maybe something is getting uh, processed publicly right before closing, but I wouldn't think that would be the case. So that's pretty interesting how uh, hackers being able to get that information. But be very careful about wiring any kind of money at closing uh, when purchasing a rental property or maybe it's even a home for yourself. Uh, as the uh, Better Business Bureau warns that this uh, billion dollar a uh, fraudulent scam that's happening uh, with 1,100% increase since uh, I think they said 2015 uh, in, as far as how prevalent this scam is. Uh, on a personal note, I've had a uh, family member who actually got hit with a uh, one of those phone scams where somebody's calling in and asking for money. And um, uh, this person was... Um, in their 80s. And it's just sad to see these kind of things happen, you know, and it's always a numbers game. They may only get, you know, one in 5,000 people to, you know, fall for the scam, but they don't care because all of it's happening automatically uh, with uh, automation. So uh, to them, they, you know, they don't care. They're just getting their pockets filled. And uh, it's sad to see, you know, in this case, a uh, first time home buyer uh, being taken advantage of. And uh, the case that I had happened in my family where uh, somebody thought that their uh, granddaughter was in need and needed 
you money and that stuff just uh it makes you sick to your stomach but you got to be aware of it um and you know tell people let them know tell them not to uh fall for these things so that is it for that story because that is depressing me just even thinking about it but uh share it with anybody uh you know because the more you know about this stuff the less it happens and uh you can kind of just snuff it out uh before these things get really rampant but uh that uh calls it for this week of REM prep for landlords. Uh, looking forward to uh, catching up with you guys next week. And if you have any questions, feel free to share in the Facebook group at REM prep for landlords. And uh, we always look forward to hearing your discussions and dialogues in there. And that's a great place to connect with other like-minded landlords and real estate investors such as yourself. All right, guys, until next week, good luck and take care. Oh, 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 o